My work now is on uh, the topic of violence. I first uh, worked in West Africa as a Peace Corps volunteer. And um, at that time, the country where I was working was very peaceful, Liberia in West Africa. Um, then I went to uh, graduate school after Peace Corps and returned to Liberia to do my dissertation in anthropology. And I focused on secrecy institutions among uh, the ballet of Liberia. And then um, six years later or so, I did another year of research in Sierra Leone among the Mendi, um, and the Mendi are very closely related to the Kbele, uh, belonging to the same language family, the Mande language family. Now those two countries, when I was there, were very peaceful. Now at this time, they just both had gone through a horrible civil war in Liberia beginning in 89, in Sierra Leone beginning like a year later. Um, so my research now has shifted almost by default to try and understand violence. And the way I approach that, since I have an interest in language, is what I call the language of violence, or the language that is used in moments of violence, uh, often a language that is telling the victim why they deserve to be punished, why they deserve to be injured. Um, it's, it's kind of a study of what you might call language and ideology of violence the justifications that are used for hurting somebody and so forth. So this past summer, I went back to Liberian Sierra Leone and also a refugee camp of Liberians in Ghana. And I spent about six weeks going between Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, visited uh, the villages where I did my research um, in Sierra Leone and Liberia and uh, interviewed people who had gone through the Civil War the villages were quite destroyed, so it was a very much of an emotional trip for me also to uh, meet friends who had suffered during the war and heard their stories of uh, how much, you know, things that had happened, suffering, people who were killed that I knew and so forth. And I did interviews, I'm especially focusing on child soldiers, so I did a lot of interviews. Um, about child soldiers, their role in the war, how they were used by the military rebel groups and so forth. Um, any, do you want me to continue? Or do you yeah, have tell me a bit about the patronage system that you make use of in the practical side of your research. Yeah, here. yeah. one of the uh, theoretical issues that I'm interested in is patron-client relationships. And to understand West African politics, where I work, uh, you need to understand patron-client relationships, or sometimes what are called patrimonial systems. And uh, I grew up, one of the things that happens in anthropology is a kind of congruence between one's, let's say, um, temperament or cultural temperament and certain intellectual issues. So there was a congruence between my understanding of patron-client relationships growing up with Boston Irish politics and the kind of patron-client relationships that I saw in Liberia and Sierra Leone. And for the specific research I'm doing now on child soldiers, I was interested in the way in which the children were essentially clients within a patrimonial patron-client system of a military regime. They were kind of seen as, as um, um, providing services to big men. In, in, in the phraseology we often use is the big man system. And the children were part of that big man system, but especially dependent. You know, patron-client relationships are built on certain forms of dependency. And for the children who might have lost their parents, their village was burned, they had to turn someplace to enter into relationships that might provide them some security, maybe some food, sustenance, and so forth. That dependency of the children on the big men of the military rebel groups was a replication of kind of traditional, you know, it, it was a, a structure of patron-client relationships, which shifts your focus when you start defining children as clients, because we usually think clients um, have to be older people who 
you know, um, have a certain maturity of decision making. But clientelism, I think, is a good way to try to analyze the role of child soldiers in these civil wars. So that's the link between, um, you know, patron clientage that I that you see in any system, Chicago politics, say, or that you might see as it takes on different form and function in a um, in a West African setting, and especially in a civil war setting, where dependency relationships are intensified because of the civil war.